obviously we want to um, get a win on the board. And we feel like we've played some good cricket on this tour so far, but ultimately it's about getting over the line and, and we haven't quite been able to do that, which is obviously frustrating. So um, there's still a chance to um, level up the ashes if we win the next two games, and that's very much what we're out here to do. Yeah, Australia still talk about how um, it still annoys them that you guys drew it in 2017. How much do you want to do that to them again this time? Oh, absolutely. Um, we want to win every game that, that we go out there and play, and, and there's two opportunities to do that, um, obviously with the kind of backdrop of the World Cup afterwards. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I think we feel like we've played some, some good cricket. We just haven't got over the line. And I guess credit to Australia for, for winning those big moments. But uh, we feel like we're close. Um, and hopefully tomorrow uh, we'll get a win on the board. Yeah, is there anything you've talked about that you feel like you need to do to, to win one of those big moments? We just need to keep doing what we're doing um, for a bit longer. There have obviously been some incredible games of cricket. The Test match um, was just a brilliant game and it was kind of almost in our, in our grasp. But it's just doing what we've been doing just for a bit longer, I guess. Um, we're really pleased with the way that we bowled as a unit the other day. Um, so obviously it's frustration that we couldn't get across the line, but we've, we've talked about how we've bowled well in games and batted well in games. It's now just um, <laughs> putting both together in one game. And Junction has a bit of a reputation as being a very batting friendly venue. How do you approach bowling at this ground? Um, well, I haven't seen the pitch yet. Hopefully, fingers crossed, there's a little bit in it for um, the same as, as there has been at all of the grounds. Um, but if not, you just try and um, do what you can do. Like I said, we're really happy with, with how we bowled the other day as a group. And we feel like if we do that out here, we'll, um, we'll be in with a good shout. I know you had that little ankle, uh, just an ankle really early in the series. How did that recover and how have you been feeling with your own bowling? Um, yeah, it recovered okay, thank you. A bit of a um, long-standing issue. I damaged it last in the summer and then... Um, I was going to again, I was basically stationary, but I did. But it, it's feeling all right. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that the ball's um, coming out on the whole. I, I feel like the other day I potentially um, could have got more than the one wicket, but I just want to do a job for the team and if that and just keep creating chances. I'm not I'm not bothered who takes the wicket, so long as so long as we do as a team, but I'm happy with how the ball's coming out. Cool, thank you. Thanks, Laura. We'll just go to anybody on Zoom. Um, I'm going to chuck a few questions, but obviously start with the real journalist. So if you've got a question on Zoom, please do jump in. Hi, Henry. Can I? Yes, please, Gomesh. Uh, hi, Anya. Uh, uh, your thoughts on the way Kate Cross bowled the other day, how obviously how influential she has been in England's bowling plans in the last couple of years, especially as a first in seamer and uh, how crucial she's going to be going into the World Cup? Oh, um, Crossy's been incredible for us over the last couple of years. Like you say, it's that first change bowler. Um, the amount of wickets she's picking up um, whilst going for very few runs is, is just amazing. Um, look, she's turned herself into one of the best first change bowlers in the world, I reckon. So it's, it's credit to her and the amount of work that she's put in. And um, she's good on these pitches, just kind of nipping the ball around. And we know that she'll be crucial for us in these two games out here and then leading into the World Cup. Uh, what kind of conversations are happening uh, in the dressing room, especially after the you know loss in the first ODI? Uh, given the way that uh, now that there is a no chance to like win the multi-format series, I, I think a huge thing we want to do is obviously try and level the series up and leave Australia with an eight-eight. Um, it's obviously not all we came to do. We came to um, to try and win the Ashes back, but there's still a huge amount to play for in this series and with the World Cup around the corner as well. So. There's obviously plenty of conversations going on in the dressing room. Um, we feel like we're playing good cricket. We feel like we're close to, to putting it all together and we've got a chance to do that tomorrow. Oh, thank you and best wishes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gomesh. Any more from anyone on Zoom? Can I? This is Kalyani. Can I go? Yes, please, Kalyani. Uh, hello, Anya. This Hi. is about how the bowlers managed, uh, on the tricky pitch bowlers, uh, England's bowlers managed to have a very good first innings. Going forward, do you think it's going to be the plan going with an extra uh, batter in the ODIs or do you think there'll be changes in the plan according to the situation? Um, that's way above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> if I'm being totally honest with you, it's obviously something that um, we've looked at back at home and we obviously went with seven batters in the first ODI. Um, I haven't got a clue, if I'm totally honest with you. Um, I think it's something that's always under review. You come to any ground, look at the pitches. Um, I guess 
how people are pulling up, whether we feel like we need an extra batter, an extra bowler, and, and those decisions are made. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just where we turn up, how, how the team's travelling, what we think is the best um, combination to go with on any given day. Also, with the World Cup, there's, uh, even after these two ODIs are over, your first match in the World Cup is again against Australia. So, uh, do you think, and also both these teams have played in the New Zealand in the recent time, do you think uh, going ahead, these two ODIs will give you the chance to uh, sharpen your plans in those conditions? I think both teams will probably say that, but having said that, I don't think there's much that um, either team doesn't know about each other, to be honest. Um, but of course, it's it's crucial going into that World Cup and have a group game against them. If all goes well, potentially, both teams will obviously be wanting to get through to the knockout stages, so we might play against each other again. So it's international cricket. We want to win every game that we come out and play, and, and both teams will obviously be looking at it as, a, as really good cr cricket, really good preparation leading into the World Cup. All the best and thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, I, I can see a hand up from Ananya, so we'll end with you, please, Ananya. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, hi, Ananya. Uh, I just have one question about the plans. Um, one of the standouts from the bowling group um, of England has been um, the way the plans that you've put in place for our oppositions, whether that's India um, and now Australia. Um, you know, how much of that planning is player driven and, and how much is it, how much input do the coaches or the analysts provide? It's a really um, collaborative effort, to be honest with you. Obviously, the um, Chris Sykes, our analyst, Tim McDonald, our seam bowling coach, Gareth Brees, spin bowling coach, they put in a huge amount of work, I guess, looking at footage, looking at statistics, looking at all of those kind of things and come to us with some ideas. And, and we work out, I guess, what works best for us. We all bowl pretty differently, have different strengths. Um, but I think we're, we're really pleased with the way that we've been able to execute those plans, um, like I say, in the summer and in the series so far. And, and we've just got to keep doing, doing it and know that if we do that, then we'll get the rewards. And um, just one more about um, England have a really good fast bowling group, not just the group that's taking the field, but um, you have a couple of, of really good backups on the bench as well. Um, how much does that, um, I suppose, competition for spots really push you, um, um, you know, to, to go out there and continue to, to be as consistent as you are? Yeah, it's massive. I think um, if you want to have a, a successful team, you've, that competition is really healthy because it pushes people to to want to improve, to need to improve. Um, otherwise, you know, that there's people coming up behind. And I guess it also gives us confidence as a group if someone can't play for a reason or whatever, that we've got people who come in who have proven themselves in international cricket. You've got the likes of Freya Davies, Tash Farron, who obviously didn't play the first game, but I know will come in and do an unbelievable job for us as a team. So we're in a really good place, I guess, with seamers in this group we've got several ones who are who are ready and we know can perform at international levels so that's a real strength for us as a team thank you very very much nanya thanks very much everybody special thanks to laura for leading the charge in person thanks everyone